Hey everyone, before we get into today's video, we have a new donation link. It's down in the description if you're so inclined. We very much appreciate it. And with that being said, let's get to today's video. Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. We're back. We are back, guys. Welcome. <sighs> Feels good. To the fun. Yeah, it's been like two weeks since our last episode. Um, the yep. first time we skipped just due to the holiday. It was Christmas time and we thought, hey, we didn't really have the time to record anyway. We'll just pass on this week. And then the yeah. second week, Will so graciously had a vacation planned. Yeah. <laughs> Later. I um, to go ski it up, man. Yeah, yeah. Hit the slope. Did you have a good vacation, Will? I did, good, overall. Good. It, was, it was fine. Good, good. Yeah. Did you fall whilst skiing? I did a few times. Yeah. Because in Steamboat, they didn't get... They got a lot of snow the week before. Yeah. But none during. So by like my last day skiing and boarding, it was all ice. <laughs> and I don't know if you ski much. I have in the past, have? but it's been a long time. Well, it's hard to do it on ice. Not impossible, but it, <laughs> it makes it tricky, especially if you're going really fast down a big old mountain. Yes. Which I was. Good. So yeah, I fell a few times. Oh, well, it happens. Didn't hurt anything, but I bruised my bum. Bruised your bum? Man, there's that. I'm so sorry. My wife did too. This was her first time. So we were... <laughs> it was her first time skiing, really? Yeah, well, she skied once 15 years ago. Okay, so, so it was her, her first, first time, time skiing. skiing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you had yeah, fun. Will, good. I'm glad you're back. Uh, it was yeah. a lonely week without you, my friend. So I, know. I recorded a video on my own for the I first saw. time. I was keeping up. It was really weird. and like it. No? They didn't either. I don't know that, but I'm assuming. Um, <laughs> all right, so what are we going to do today? Uh, well, first of all, follow us on social media, all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Now, Just... what are we going to do today? <laughs> okay. We have our random card of the day. Uh, then we are going to give our first impressions of Rivals of Ixalan. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we just had the set spoiled last week, and so we're going to talk about a few of the cards that we mm. are either excited for, not excited for, some of the mechanics, things like that. Uh, we, of course, have our question of the week, uh, which between now and when we talk about the question of the week, we need to come up with a question of the week. Got it. I'm on. Um, we're also going to skip over, I think, uh, talking about the previous card of the week or the question of the week because it was two weeks ago, three weeks ago, technically. So, like, right. it was something about Christmas. But thanks for participating. <laughs> um, and then obviously we have our pack opening at the very end. So uh, without I'm... further ado, let's kick it off with our random card of the day. And we have Scour the Laboratory. This is a uh, uncommon from Eldritch Moon, actually. Uh, it's an instant, instant excuse me, with Delirium. Uh, mm. Scout, Scour. I keep saying scout. Scout Scour the laboratory costs two less to cast if there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard. That is the delirium effect. So it could cost down to two blue. Uh, And the effect is just simply draw three cards. Are you sure it costs two blue? Is it not? Two less. Excuse me. Two and two blue. Yeah. My bad. I was was like... I don't like this card, by the way. No. Um, This card's bad. I thought I did when you said it might only cost two blue, but no. If it, yeah, I no. mess that up. My bad, um, guys. Well, it's not, I don't okay, know. I actually, mean, on an end step, if you're just holding on to it, mm-hmm. on their end step, if it's a nothing turn four, yeah. and you have the delirium, like, draw three cards at end step seems pretty good to me. Yes, um, I mean, it does, but the, the, I just feel like. The problem is I can't think of another time when I would cast this. Yeah, there's like literally no other time. And the thing about it too is the Delirium deck is mostly the black green deck, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that, that was, or it was the best one. And so I'm not saying you won't trigger Delirium, because obviously over time you just will, but like I just I don't know. Yeah. I, when you're the reactive deck, you're not gonna trigger it as fast. And mm-hmm. so like more times than not, I think you're gonna end up having to cast this either a turn behind the turn four ideal you know turn to play this or you know just casting it for its full cost anyway so like six mana to draw three cards is kind of it's not great right i mean draw yes it's at instant speed but and drawing three is nice but yeah i think there's probably way more efficient card draw in eldritch i'd rather draw less cards but pay less to cast those cards does that make sense would you would you draw two for three at instant speed yeah yeah about 
for four. Draw two for four. Probably not. I think that would be a little much. Draw, f- draw two for four, but with Delirium upside, it might cost two. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd consider playing that. Though, you're by the time you would want to play it, you're not going to trigger Delirium. You know what I mean? It's more like it's just value at that point. Like, you're just going to pay a little right. less. So it's just like, uh, it's just a little more efficient. <laughs> like, uh, Yeah. But it doesn't, I mean. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I'm not sold on it. I'm um, not either. I think it's a weird card to have Delirium on, to be honest. It makes sense to me only because like, there weren't that many things with Delirium. Because <laughs> 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 they had to make another card with Delirium. Sure. Um, and draw three is strong, and card draw strong, and blue needs some kind of big card draw thing in just about every set. Yeah. Um, and I can't think of another one from Eldritch Moon. The one I thought was an Eldritch Moon, the one blue, one X, or two blue, one X, was... um. Pull from tomorrow? Yeah. I'm on cap. Exactly. Yeah. So. Eh. Uh, I'm just. Eh, I don't love it. I don't like it. It's not super it. playable, I nah. don't think. Definitely not in constructed. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe in draft. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, I think but that's really the only place for me. Limited, I think it works. Yeah. Uh, just because card draws at a premium. Mm-hmm. Everything's really heightened. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Limited, so. Yeah, maybe. Even though you can't always bank on Delirium as much, it's just kind of a bonus. It is kind of a bonus, and on a card like this, I think you're counting on it just being a bonus. Um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Eh, yeah. it's not great. Um, we've had better. <laughs> we've had we've worse. had a lot better and a lot worse. <laughs> um, but <laughs> guys, we are going to go into Rivals of Exelon. Uh, obviously, this is dropping in like two weeks, something like Very that. Very soon. Uh, we just had everything spoiled last Friday, I believe, was the last day of spoilers. So. We should have everything at this point. Hopefully we do. Uh, top level, though, we're going to talk about what we like and what we dislike about the set. So, Will, mm. kick us off. Things I like. Yep. Um, the flavor is a pretty easy one Flavors, to say. Flavors, yeah. It's... Uh, but something that stuck out to me, uh, a lot of things have flash, which I think is interesting. I like that. Because now, like in the story, everything's kind of going crazy, and there's <laughs> fighting everywhere, and, and people are getting... Like farting, fighting in the jungle, and, and say farting. I almost did. <laughs> fighting in the jungle and all sorts of stuff. So it's cool that like things come out of nowhere. Things yeah. Like flash, bam, bang. You're getting ambushed. Fuching. I don't know. That yeah. was neat. Um, really, other than that, I'm not. I'm gonna be honest. I'm not crazy excited about yeah. this set. There are some fun flavor things yeah. going on. Uh, Azor's here. For some reason. Just hanging out. If anyone's got an answer for that, I'd love to hear it. Because I don't know what he's doing <laughs> on another plane. I didn't think he was a planeswalker. Because uh, none of his cards are. Uh, <laughs> maybe he was always here. I don't know. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, I'm in the same boat as you. Again, the flavor's great. As it would be in yeah. an Ixalan set. Um, what, there are definitely a few cards that I'm excited about. But overall, there's not too many cards out of this set that are like, man can't wait for this one you know what i mean like they're really powerful cards but because of their cost they're not that great there are some really efficient cards but because of some drawbacks or something they're not that great so it's just like it'll be fine i think i think it'll be fun to draft it'll definitely Um, be a fun limited set yeah Um, it's gonna be very combat centric i would say yeah i Um, mean we were talking before we recorded it um or we were texting when i was mm -hmm. on a plane uh (laughs) that this isn't really going to be the boost standard needs. I yeah. don't think. I, I it's don't not th- going to get us out of the rut that standard is in. At least we don't think so. No, I don't believe so. Um, just because there's not... There's one card that I'll talk about in a second that's kind of something, but it's not, <laughs> like, it's not great. It's not. Um, um, we do want to talk a little bit about the Ascend mechanic. Um, yeah, this which is, is brand new. It is brand new. Uh, and if you don't know, Ascend basically is, it's printed as like a keyword on the card. Mm. And if you control 10 or more permanents, Ascend will trigger, which means you have the city's blessing, yeah. which is similar to a planeswalker emblem. It's just a thing that you get and it's yep. just there. The city's blessing itself has no additional effects. Nope. It's just a thing you get. You cannot get rid of it. However, there are. <laughs> wish you could. Um, no, no, but there, there are. For the city's blessing. <laughs> um, there are plenty of cards that get a boost off of this ascend mechanic, right. and so 
sometimes it'll be an effect that maybe the card has a general effect like draw a card this is just an example not an actual card maybe the card says you play this and you draw a card if you have the city's blessing draw two cards something right. along those lines or this effect can't be triggered until you have the city's blessing or something along those lines yeah. so something funky yeah it's uh it's not i don't it's like cute. it it's cute i don't like it um, the <laughs> problem really the the issue for me is it's very hard to get to it is um, yeah 10 permanents can be i mean permanents anything uh that does include lands worth noting right. but so it it might not be as hard as i'm thinking it it's going to be mm -hmm. but i can't imagine a world where you are trying to dirtle just to the city's blessing just to make ascend things work yeah um, cuz ascend effects are very strong there's a card that i got really excited about that has ascend on it um and it, these effects are cool none of them are i think game ending up against yeah. a deck that's more efficient more aggressive because the thing with ascend is you can't really afford to be aggressive because you can't put your permanent the only button. deck that i can see it triggering fairly easy off of is something like a white weenie token strategy sure you know what i mean sure. where like you just throw out a bunch of tokens trigger city's blessing and then get some kind of boost off of it but yeah. i don't really see that being worthwhile building i think um, a black white vampire deck can make it work. maybe yeah um, I do think, too, with this set, you'll notice if you look through the spoilers, there's a lot of enchantments instead of just your general instants and sorceries. And the reason, obviously, they're doing that is for Ascend. Right. And so we're probably, you know, seeing... Normally, you would see maybe five permanents on the field on turn three or four or something like that. You might see six, right? Like, we're that. let's add a number to that and assume that that's going to be what we're looking at. I just don't see it still happening very often, though. I think... Green decks might also have it easier as well. Mm. There's several cards that let you play additional lands. Sure. And cards that let you explore more. So. Explore does work very well with this. Right. So coupled together, green decks might have an easier time. Yeah. Um, I just think overall it's not going to be a worthwhile. I don't think it'll be yeah. a constructed viable mechanic. Right. That, you know what I mean? That's like, my thinking as well. I think it may be something in limited where we get a board stall. And somebody's going to trigger the blessing and then all of a sudden maybe get some Stuff additional effects, yeah, things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That'll get you out of a board stall. But other than that, I don't really see it being that useful. Um, we could be 100% right. wrong on this, but right. that's just the impression that we get. Yeah, that's um, my thing is constructed. Um, yeah, I just don't see it. I do think in Commander, uh, right, Ascend does work, yeah. right? Like that's where you're going to get the crazy board states and things like that. Uh, you yeah. can do some infinite combos to get tons of tokens, something along those lines. But I think at that point, you would have hopefully won already. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, I think in those cases, we might see it uh, have some impact. But I don't yeah. think in constructed standard, it'll be that viable. Right. Um, right. People will try it. Absolutely. And they should. Yeah. And I think if it, if it turns out to work, I mean, Another archetype would be nice. Yes, right absolutely. Now, so. I'm, I'm tired of energy, guys. I just don't see anything in this set that's going to be like, oh, well, energy's done. You know? Yeah. I, I do think, and this triggers into, or this segues into uh, some of our individual cards, Blood Sun hmm. is an interesting card. And the reason I say that, it doesn't turn off any of the energy creatures. So, like, uh, nothing along those lines. But right. Aether, hmm. what is the land? Aether Hub, that gives you energy when it enters the battlefield. Yeah. That doesn't work under Blood Sun. Well, right, and you can't pay energy to make it make mana now. Exactly. So I think we may see Blood Sun. I don't think it'll be great, but I think it shuts down Aether Hub. That's about it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so we can jump in if you want. Yeah, let's jump in. Let's start with Blood Sun. I like Blood Sun. Yeah, Blood Sun's cool. It's really cool. Um, <laughs> Blood Sun's not really... It's not going to be It's not going to touch standard that much. No, it's uh, not standard. But that's it. fine, honestly. It's cool with it's me. It's not what it's for. Exactly. Um, this does, however, all of the funky lands that are running around in Ixalan and Rivals, yep. this does eliminate those. There's a bunch that like pay whatever, make mm -hmm. tokens, do damage, blah, blah, blah. That takes care of that. So maybe yeah. a sideboard it can be in there, but I don't see it going main deck in much. Anything. no but that's okay yeah because it does a there's lot more. so many other places where this makes so oh, much more yeah. sense so let's talk about a few land cycles people no. let's go super jank first let's talk guild gates <laughs> <laughs> you ever wanted to build mazes in and make it a little bit quicker yeah. they don't come into play tap now wait what you want bounce lands that count for two and you don't have to bounce that sounds great 
you can blood sun them. What? <laughs> there are plenty of lands we've seen yeah. over the past, since this was spoiled like a few days ago, mm-hmm. less than a week. We've seen a lot of lands from older, older sets, things like Weatherlight and things like that, where they have super heavy downsides for super good upsides. There's one, and I do not remember the name of the card, that basically it comes into play, you have to sacrifice lands or something along those lines, but it taps for three mana of any color. It's essentially Black Lotus, but it's repeated. You no longer have any of the downside of that. That's just at that point a repeated Black Lotus. (laughs) So, like, cards like that are getting a huge boost out of this, and so what we're going to see, I think is a lot of brews around this Blood Sun in a lot of different formats. I think this makes yeah. Bounce Lands so much more viable in Modern, um, which is awesome. Yep. Uh, it may be that we see some sort of amulet deck again. You know what I mean? It's, it's very possible. I don't know. Uh, That's just a possibility. Now, um, it, it does get tricky um, because if you don't have Blood Sun, they are simply Bounce Lands. They are simply Bounce Lands. But that yes. upside is nice. It's so good. You're going up oh my gosh, essentially... It's so good another turn every time yeah exactly exactly and say you explore you can (laughs) theoretically play a bounce land because it doesn't bounce or come into play tapped or anything like that you tap it to explore you get another bounce land. (laughs) you can just keep doing that you can chain that which is pretty sweet um that would be you know perfect scenario but it would be really cool yeah Yeah, exactly um but it works really well with primeval titan as well so if you saw that little earthquake it's because that camera didn't used to be there and i just kicked you. are we still in frame boil come on probably all right so what's another card you're excited about uh so the other card i want to talk about was the phoenix rekindling phoenix yeah you love this card don't you i like it i okay, don't okay. love it um i like it because a while back we talked about answers to um the big scary dragon glory bringer <laughs> oh um, so this card helps with glory bringer but it doesn't beat it necessarily here's what i mean so rekindling phoenix on its own its body's big enough to fight and kill glory bringer so no one's going to come in and really trade with this thing mm. so what that means is his exalted trigger goes on the phoenix like every time or else the glory bringer is just going to die mm-hmm and then Rekindling Phoenix gets to come back again yeah, and again and again. Yeah. So it's really a blank for that effect. Um, that was my biggest takeaway. And it's just a beater in the air otherwise. Yeah. Right? Just a 4-3 yeah. beater, which is sweet. Um, however, unfortunately, the two decks that use Glorybringer the most... <laughs> Are the decks that would also want this. Yeah! <laughs> uh, Ramen Up Red might just exclude Glorybringer for a little bit just to try this out because it comes in a turn earlier. Yeah. And it comes back and back and back. That's true. So this might work a little better in that really speed strategy, just because it costs four and not five. Yeah, yeah. That being said, Glorybringer is still super strong. It's still, I would say, a better card. Yeah, and it's still ping stuff off the field yeah. every other turn. It's still really nice. Again, this helps, though. Yeah, it does. Definitely which helps. I, which I like. Um, And that was the big reason I was excited about it. I also love Phoenix. Yeah, you do. In Magic, yeah, especially. Um, but it is a really efficient card for mm. four mana. At it four is. Three. Yeah. Um, I don't always like higher uh, power, lower toughness. I don't know why. Maybe it's because my monkey brain likes things that are even, but I really don't like it. Well, it dies to Bolt. Not that there's a Bolt. There's Lightning Strike. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's Lightning Strike. I'm really nervous about I hit puberty on. really quick. Sorry, guys. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this fear's fake. Yeah, this peels off. Um, no, <laughs> lightning strike though does hit it, which is worth noting. Uh, yeah, but um, then again, it just comes back and back. It does just like, come back. Yeah, but you, you can, do unless you if you kill that kill the thing. token. Yeah, that's the thing because it has to be sacrificed on upkeep. Yes, but if the token lives, it's essentially yeah. like a two for one all the time. Yeah, um, which is really sweet. I like. It. I do like, I like that. it a lot. Super efficient. Uh, let's talk very briefly about the entire primal cycle. Sure. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are exciting. They are exciting. There's one of each color, and those are the ones we're going to talk about. There it's is the battle. primal calamity, uh, which is sort of the head of the primals, right. but the three head. Yeah, the three headed monster whatever. Naya thing. Anyway, uh, so primal dawn, the four eight for six and two white. It has flying, double strike, vigilance, trample, and indestructible. 
That's pretty Holy. sweet. Um, that's there's already talk about that replacing the angel in uh Godfair's gift. Yeah. Um, makes sense. Yeah, it just makes sense. It's gonna happen. It's a crazy, crazy good card. Mm. So there's no doubt about that. Um, not much downside to that card. I mean, no. it's expensive, right? If you were just gonna cast it outright, but that's not what they're trying to do. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> Precisely. Um, Primal Tide. This is the one I like the most. It's not the best. It's Agreed. clearly not the best, Agreed. but I just like it. It is a 7-7 seven, seven for 7 mana, 5 and 2 blue. Uh, it cannot be countered. Ooh. Pretty good upside. You have no maximum hand size. Pretty good upside. It's also nice, but... Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, you draw a card. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and you can discard three cards, exile them, and then return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So it's got protection, basically. Right. Um, and you're going to be drawing a lot of cards off of this anyway, so like you will theoretically have enough cards to, to protect it pretty easily. Yeah, that's my biggest thing, is that when you get to cast this, are you going to have the three cards all the time to discard stuff? Maybe not, but I'm just saying... I think once, probably. Yeah. But I just don't know about... Maybe not twice, but I do think it's interesting because even if they do remove it, they have to play something to remove it, which means you're going to draw a card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, it replaces itself no matter what, which I think is pretty sweet. Um, Commander, maybe. That's about it. I think definitely Commander. <laughs> um, no maximum hand size is really valuable. It is really format. valuable, yeah. Um, Though there are nice. cheaper ways to make that happen. There are, but do um, they come with a 7-7 seven, seven scary elder dinosaur? True. They do not. Nothing has up until this point. <laughs> um, all right, Primal Death, a 6-6 six, six for four and two black with Death Touch. You can pay one this black and so reveal cool. it from your hand to put a prey counter on target creature. Activate this ability only during your turn, but you can repeat the ability. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, destroy each creature your opponent controls with a prey counter on it. I love this card. This one's awesome. It wow. is really sweet. It's the threat, right? Yeah. It's the imminent threat that you're gonna sweep a board. <laughs> like, yes. People will play around it. You show it once, people will take that into account, and they will play around it. Yeah. I love that. I think it's sweet. Yeah, this is my... This is, like, my second favorite of them. Um, okay. But I think it's the most viable. Probably, yeah. I think so. Well, um, we were talking earlier, maybe not the most viable, actually. I think the green one might be. Uh, yeah, well, we'll see about that. Um... Anyway, when uh, we'll go over to Primal Storm. I went ahead and started reading it. Whenever Primal Storm attacks, exile the top card of each player's library. Then you may cast any number of non-land cards exiled that way without paying their mana cost. This is a 6-6 six, six for 4 and 2 red. Yeah, this one is really cool. This is sweet. I love it. What about this going in Ramen Up Red? Is it too expensive? It's too expensive for okay. Ramen Up Red. Um, I think so, yeah. But I'm just... You know, I know somebody's gonna I mean, try they're, it. They're playing so. something that cost five. Why not just put one in the cost six? Well, yeah, why you not? Know, why not? not? <laughs> uh, yeah. Free stuff sounds good. <laughs> I mean, it's so cool. I love this card, but uh, this one, like, it doesn't have any use up until turn six. Whereas yeah, yeah. Primal Death does because again, it is that threat. It's the threat. Of you can start sweepers. threatening with Primal Death on turn one. That's exactly. the cool thing about it. Exactly. Um. Theoretically, I think Primal Storm's effect is way better because yeah, yeah, every color kills stuff, but red and especially just playing free things that, aren't, <laughs> that weren't your things is nice. Yeah, um, but it just doesn't get to that as quickly. So yeah, I don't know. I'm not it's a cool card, but red. we'll see how it plays out as yeah. far as constructor goes. I do think we'll probably see some variants of all of these in standard. People trying them. I don't At know if they'll be point, competitive, yeah, yeah. Uh, but we'll definitely see them. The last one. Do you want to take... You're excited about this one. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I don't know how to say her name, though. Gata. I haven't said any of the names on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> the Primal Hunger, the green one. Uh, a For 12. It's a 12-12 for 12. Um, 10 coming with two green. Primal Hunger costs X less to cast, where X is the total power of creatures you control. 12-12 with trample. It also, yeah, it has trample. Holy crap. So the reason I think this is the most viable mm. is it's not total creatures. It's just the power, baby. Yeah, yeah. There are plenty of big things you can cast for cheap. In, say, a Naya Dinos deck, by turn four, you've probably got over 10 power on the board. Yeah, probably, right. or at least very close to it. Well, you've got, now especially, there's a dinosaur that costs two. Mm -hmm. That's a 3-3. Three, three. 
There's one that's a 3-3 three, three that comes in and makes another 3-3. Three, three. That's six right there. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's on turn five. So if you cast that and you're holding Primal Hunger, if nothing dies, you can cast it next turn. For like three in total? That's insane. Yeah. That's so insane. Yeah. What I like about this card is it reminds me of a card that my good friend Tyler used to play, um, which you might recognize, Goldtree. Do you know that card? <laughs> yeah, of course. It's a 10-10 ten, ten for like 10 and a green or something yeah. like that. Uh, it costs one less to cast for every creature in your graveyard or something along those uh-huh. lines. Um, I love that card. Yeah. I love the effect of let's make a thing cheaper based on other things that you have to do anyway. Like you're gonna have cards in the graveyard. In this case, you're gonna play creatures because you're a dino deck. Like that's yeah. what you're gonna do. And so like, you just get a bonus for that now. <laughs> like that's yeah. amazing. And now any card that says dinosaurs cost one less to cast now costs make this thing two less. To cast. That's true. If they're one one. If, if they're, they're two one, it's three. <laughs> you see, like it, I think it's. I think this is. Do you think we'll see a deck where it's just us a smattering of all of these like, hey, let's make dinos cheaper and then four of these? Yeah, why not? Why not, right? If you can do it and make it like who wouldn't want a twelve twelve? You can't burn you can't burn it out. Can't burn that, no. <laughs> uh yeah, it's very nice. You can, however and this is a card I wanted to talk about. <laughs> you can blazing hope it. Which I'm interested to see this card. I mean, you can. You most likely will be able to Blazing Hope it. <laughs> Here's my thing. Yes, you can, but you hope not. You hope not. I'm just saying you could. Yeah. So let's talk about this card. It is an instant for one white. Exile target creature with power greater than or equal to your life total. This is an interesting card. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say it's a good card. I don't want to go there yet. But I think this is an interesting card. It is an uncommon, so in draft, you probably won't see very many of these. Yeah. Um, I think it's good at uncommon. I I don't know. I feel like this could be so good, but I feel like you have to be losing for it to be good, and that's right. what I don't like about it. I mean, it. it's that it's the um, Innistrad effect all over again. What was it? Fateful Hour or something like that? Something like that, yeah. Where, like, if you have X or less life, do another thing. Do extra stuff. And we just found that that it it didn't really dig you out of anything yeah and this just seems worse to me than that stuff yeah like uh, all the cards that that effect was on are cards that would help you in a losing situation you Mm -hmm. make more tokens you gain more life you draw more cards timely reinforcements was that one that's one Mm -hmm. yeah yeah where if you get extra tokens or something like that if you you have less life more which is good super good but this just takes care of one thing yeah so that seems way worse to me now exile for one I mean, it's Path to Exile or Swords to Plowshares, but with no downside, right? Theoretically. The downside is you're losing. The downside is you're losing, yeah. But I'm saying, like, as far as there's no actual effect where it's like, here, fetch them out of land or Uh gain them some life, albeit gaining life isn't that big of a downside. I don't know about this card, though. I am interested to see it. We did talk about outside of Standard, uh, Mm -hmm. potentially Modern, seeing it either in or against death shadow seems pretty good because death shadow is going to have a low life total no matter what that makes their death shadow good and so in that case you'll be able to blazing hope anything which is pretty sweet right i like Um, that additionally against death shadow because they're gonna basically have a huge huge creature you should Mm -hmm. be able to after shocking yourself and doing like you know a few of those sort of effects a couple times you should be able to just blazing hope it for free you know what i mean like it should be a bunch and it's not necessarily that you're in a losing position so much as you just got a good timing to play it so i don't know i'm interested to see how this card goes Mm -hmm. um it's really the only uncommon that's like super exciting to me i say super exciting that's semi exciting to me um sure but yeah i i just think it's going to be interesting we'll see how that pans out though yeah i'm with you there i've wanted another one white exile card for a while um but not like this um (laughs) <laughs> if, what would have made it good for you what would you have instead of the the life total text you know what i mean like what would have exile target creature uh, i don't know um i mean we've seen again bringing up swords to polish shares they gain some life off of it yeah, yeah. or path to exile they fetch out a basic land tapped what would be another one that would be okay? You know what I mean? I'm trying to think what's, like... You discard a card from your hand to play it? That wouldn't be bad. To I me. would be okay with that. That'd be actually... You could exploit that, so mm-hmm. I'd be super cool with that. Yeah. 
Um, that might be too good. <laughs> yeah, you have to give them something, right? Yeah. You can't let... You don't want to... You don't want to interact with yourself, because exactly. then you can't exploit it. Exactly. So maybe you let them... Ex- Draw a card? Let them explore based explore. on the creature's power. Okay, yeah. Like, if it's a 5-5, five, five, they explore... Actually, exploring five times would be insane. No, that would be insane. Um, hmm. ex- maybe let them explore based on... Um, it's CMC. I'm trying to think of what it wouldn't be. The number of colors in its CMC. I like that. That's not a bad one. I like that. I'd be okay with that. I'd be fine with that. Yeah. That seems great. That'd be interesting. Because they're going to explore once unless it's an artifact. Against artifact creatures, it's just free. That would be pretty sweet, too. True. Um, which I don't think that breaks the card because, you know, that's fine. Yeah, I'd be interested. I don't know. I, but I do want to see how this goes because... One mana exile effects. No, they're in his history of magic. I mean, that's they're wonderful. They're great. So let's see how that goes. The most efficient. Are there any other cards that you want? Yeah, to talk dude. About? There's a few. Um, oh, I wanted to talk about Dire Fleet Poisoner. That was oh fun. yes, the black, uh, flashy pirate lady. So she's got <laughs> flash and death touch. She's a two-two. When it comes into the battlefield, when it enters the battlefield, target attacking pirate you control gets plus one, plus one, and gains death touch until end of turn. Uh, so this, funnily enough, is the most efficient removal in black. Yeah. If you think of it as removal and not yeah. as a creature, which I tend to do. Yeah, I would So too. I love this um, because it's combat upside always if you're holding it. Yeah. Right? Um, you do have to wait, of course, until your opponent is attacking or you're attacking um, because it can't give something else death touch mm-hmm. unless that thing's attacking. Kind of a bummer. Yeah. Um, however... I think it, I think it's still exceptionally good removal uh, to flash in. We saw what's the there's a green card that has flash and death touch. Uh, the snake. The, uh, the snake. Oh my gosh, I can't think of the name, but I know what you're talking the about. The gruel snake from Gate Crash. Yeah. Um, it was played a bunch as removal. This is the same thing except mm-hmm. with more upside. Yeah, yeah. It's on a two-two body. Uh, it gives something else a bonus if they're attacking. So it's a little more flexible than that. I think it's awesome i do like this card a lot really excited even for constructed honestly yeah i think constructed will definitely see it um yeah it's just super good it's basically just free removal you mm-hmm. know what i mean yeah, yeah. so it's great it's a one for one potentially two for two yes so, yeah i like it i like it i assume you want to talk about oh yeah masterminds acquisition black burning wish my gosh this card is interesting it's sweet Search your library for a card. Uh, put it into your hand, right? Put it into your hand, then shuffle your library, or choose a card that you own from outside the game and put it into your hand. <laughs> Worth noting, that means sideboards for any official tournaments or anything like that. Yeah, you, you um, cheat. But it's two and two black at sorcery speed to be able to pull something. And what this allows you to make is a toolbox deck. Yeah, which is fun. We haven't seen a true toolbox deck in a while in Standard. No. Um, um, I should have looked at what other cards might work well with this, but mm-hmm. I didn't. Um, in terms of toolbox stuff, yeah, yeah. Uh, but just the potential is nice. Well, what's um, really nice about this is all of these little like random enchantments that do mm-hmm. random things against random decks. You just throw them in your sideboard, <laughs> and now yeah. you can pull any of them out at any time with this card. Yeah. Um, which is really really sweet. I mean, for instance, Blood Sun. You know, if you're against true. a deck that's running a bunch of non basics that do a bunch of random things just side or just pull out a blood sun and then play it um which is really sweet i i'm interested there's gonna be people obviously i would be one of them to build a deck around this yeah. and try and really make this work i think it's one of the the most exciting cards in this set for me because it does sort of apply that toolbox strategy to standard sure so i'm really interested to see how this goes i don't think there's been a real toolbox deck in a long time a long, long time. No, and um, really not in standard much. Ever. Definitely not in standard. Um, but like mystical teachings is a good toolbox deck for like popper. Yeah. Even modern occasionally. Uh, Gifts ungiven is sort of a toolbox deck. Mm-hmm. And so like, I don't know. It's just going to be really interesting to see something like this in standard. We can see if it works. Yeah. Um. It might. It might. It's it might a little expensive. Yeah. At four. Burning wishes two. So yeah. I mean it's, it's restrictive. But it's better, you yeah. know. 
Um, yeah. But we do see, you know, we've seen the outside of the game effect before in the wishes yeah. and we still see burning wish storm today in legacy so right i don't think this has that much lasting impact no like, definitely as much not as burning wish i mean but no it's it, too expensive for exactly that. exactly still pretty should sweet. be fun though yeah um so other things with the set um let me think are there is there anything else exciting not really um <laughs> Yeah, no. it's not that exciting. This looks like a great set to draft, but yes, the Adso uh, Can Seer is kind of interesting. It's one a green and a white for a yeah. two three human druid. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. You tap it to do that. You can also sack it to bring a dinosaur back from your graveyard or f- from your graveyard to your hand. Um, right, right, right. Maybe in the the primal hunter deck, you play this. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. I mean, I would probably. Yeah. Um, I do think there are a few lords in here that are pretty good. Mm-hmm. There's obviously mm-hmm. a pirate, a vampire, and a merfolk lord, so excited to see those, but they're lords. We all right. know that they're good. There's no exciting lands to speak of, mm-hmm. although it's worth noting with Blood Sun, the tap lands, which they are just tap lands, uh, do become just dual lands, which I think is interesting. Which is nice. It also shuts off Evolving Wilds. Yeah. Uh, there was one other card. Uh, I forgot the name of it, but it's basically a it's three and a blue for a two two creature with effectively a brainstorm on it, which I think is interesting. Um, we're not gonna see it. I think we might see it uh, do some interesting things in standard, but it's really only good with shuffle effects, and the greatest shuffle effect is like evolving wilds right now. Um, yes, uh, Riverwise Augur. Uh, it's a Merfolk wizard. So basically when it enters the battlefield, you draw three cards, then put two cards from your hand back on top of your library in any order. So it's Brainstorm on a stick, which is great. Uh, but the reason Brainstorm is so good is because of shuffle effects. And so right. I think we'll definitely see this, but I don't think it'll be at the impact that Brainstorm is in its other formats. I mean, definitely not, especially because um, this costs four. Yeah, oh yeah, um, definitely. Um, but it is Merfolk, which means it'll mm-hmm. probably go into the tribal deck, which is pretty sweet. So, I think it should. That's pretty good. It is pretty uh, good. Advantage, I guess. Yeah. Um, there was one that I wanted to, I think. Or was it? Oh, yeah. We get Sil- Silvergill Adept in Standard again, which is fun. What is Silvergill Adept? It's the, um, when it comes in, do you draw? It's in Fish. Oh. This one, as an additional call. Uh, oh. Reveal a merfolk or pay three. Oh, okay. Yeah, when it ends, and then it draws a card. a card. A two one for two that draws you a card. I think it's uh, fine. It's nice. Uh, yeah. Removal in this set is weird. I wanted to talk about that a second. Um, it's all really expensive. Yeah. And really restrictive, which I think is odd. Um, like for, I'm not a fan of it. I don't I'm like not that. either. Uh, the destroy. There's a destroy target creature, which in the past has been on an instant for three. Uh, destroy non black at doom blade instant for two. It's on a sorcery for four. Yeah, it just seems bad. It's strange. <laughs> it's strange. Like, that's should never really be played. Yeah. Um, it is a bit of a pricey set. Like, all of the, the low-cost stuff is just creature stuff, which isn't bad. It's just, like, there, there needs to be some good removal. Uh, mm-hmm. An interesting card released to the wind. I think that's an interesting one. So this one is one of those trap cards for me. Yeah, that, I think it might be, yeah. I mean that new players aren't going to play it mm-hmm. because it's like, just bounce one of their things for three? That's terrible. I don't think it's meant to bounce. It's not a bounce for them. No, you, you want to get yourself. another ETB thing. Yeah. Um, is my takeaway. Uh, I'd be interested flexible. to see if there's something you can exploit with that. Like, not necessarily in standard. Outside. Okay. Um, I don't know. I just think it's an interesting card. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that you can play it basically at you know anywhere from here mm-hmm. to the rest of the game you know what i mean as long as yeah. you don't even have to pay the cost you just get to play it again which yeah. is pretty sweet so like you play something out you want to protect it or you don't have the combo piece for a couple turns you exile it and then when you get the other combo piece you, you play just the combo play piece it. and then play the other thing you know right. what i mean like that's pretty sweet to me it's but, awesome um i don't know if that's actually good enough you know what i mean um because it is three mana yeah and, like you have to be able to play the thing, then exile it, then get the other thing. It's and one of those cards seems... that's like, it's great when it's great. and Yeah, but I think nine times out of ten, it's not going to be that good. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is the other card that got me, the only other card that got me excited about Ascend is the Summoner T2. 
Tilalani's. 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 That one. Yeah. It's a 1 1 for 2. Uh, when it attacks, you can pay X and a red to put X one one dino creatures or elemental creatures, excuse me, tapped and attacking. Uh, then they go away unless you have the city's blessing, which this does help you get. So that's pretty sweet. Yes, I like that exactly. Yeah, uh, this card made me kind of. This is the only one that I think would be really, really, really good. There's another black vampire that you draw X cards. Um, and then gain X life and they lose X life mm. where X is something. That was pretty cool. But that doesn't help you turn on City's Blessing. This does. The only thing I don't like about it is that it is a 1-1. One, one. Right. You do put it so, like, in danger. You have to... It might be a one-shot thing. It is something... It's mm -hmm. worth noting it's when it attacks, not when it deals damage. Right. So as soon as it attacks, you can use this effect. So it may mm -hmm. be kind of a one-shot deal mm -hmm. where you trade this for a bunch of other 1-1s, one, which is fine. I don't think that's bad. But I'm just saying, like, that's basically mm -hmm. what you should probably more more times than not expect to happen because it is a one one. It's gonna dive really easily. Yeah, definitely. There's no um, reason they wouldn't block it. Yeah. Um, but my thing is, if you play it, swing. You yeah. get maybe four of these little dudes. Yeah. Five of these little dudes. If you're doing it just for the city's blessing, you've given yourself a board of trump blockers and the city's blessing for other yeah. stuff. Oh yeah. For essentially not that much mana. Oh yeah. Right. It's not that much. No. I mean. It's a mana sink, which I like, actually. Yeah. Because it gives you a way to sink some of your excess mm -hmm. mana late game. And let's say they don't kill it. You just get another... You just get to do it again, points. yeah, which is sweet. sweet. Uh, this is the only Ascend card that really tickled my fancy. I knew that was the way... I literally, in my head, I was like, tickled your fancy? Yep. I knew that's what well, you were going to say. Wayward Sword Tooth, actually, but not for its Ascend effect. Yeah, yeah. Because you get to play another land every turn. Yeah. It's the 5-5 five, five for 3, but I can't attack or block until you get a set. Or is it until you control a bunch of lands? I forget. Hang on. Is We're this... talking about way more cards than we initially thought, by the way. I know. Is this card good? No, it is a send. Okay. So, yeah. It's not that good. Yeah, I mean, it's But whatever. you get to play additional, additional lands. Additional lands. It's pretty cool. That is cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do like that it's a 5-5. Five, five. I think you could exploit this in some way. It should uh, be really cool. Yeah. Not necessarily in standard. Nah. Again, only to play more lands every time. Yeah, that's what I mean, nice. though. If you can do this and explore a bunch, like this card and uh, Jade something, Jade something, this, Jade Light Ranger, it explores twice. Mm hmm. So. Permanence. Yeah. I mean, ideally permanence. Yeah. So that's nice. Yeah. I don't know. Green could get hyper aggressive soon. Now that I think about it. You know what, we're, we're basing Explore off of, like, glue stones, and that's not how that goes. What do you mean? Um, explore doesn't really give you permanence. It puts them into your hand. Right. If you so, play like, you'll get extra, extra permanence, but I'm just saying, like, it's not like clues where you would get an actual artifact clue that mm, goes there, on yeah, the Yeah, there's no, like, Explore token. You know what I mean? No, 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 I'm saying, like... So it helps you get there, but it's not, like... I'm just Not saying in conjunction with play additional lands. Yeah. Because yeah, there's yeah. the sword tooth and then there's a sorcery that lets you explore and mm -hmm. gives you the chance to play another land and draw a card. Yeah. For one, which is cool. It is Or cool. no, sorry, you don't draw a card. You just explore and play another land. Yeah. That's right. It's pretty cool, though. Yeah. I'm, I'm saying, though, green might... Green might Now that I up. think about it a little bit, green can get kind of stompy. We will find Not out. Not stompy. Primal Hunter. Quick. Being the best. Quick. All right. Oh, God, and that dino just helps you with Primal Hunter. For th for three oh Oh, God, no, that's actually really good. Hold on. Because <laughs> it's a 5-5 five, five for three. You don't need it to attack. If you just play two of those, your Primal Hunter com Hunger comes in at two with for two green. And you just play a bunch with, of lands. But, but, but two. No, that got yeah, that so good. <laughs> if you had two of those dinos out, you're playing three lands every turn. And then you're playing your big fat 12-12. Dino three. ramp. I mean. Dude. All right, there's my brew. That's what I'm going That's with. your brew? We'll make that happen. Maybe mono green dino ramp. <laughs> that is a lot of words to say. Mono green dino ramp. Mono green dino ramp. A dinosaur ramp that is green. Uh, I got excited now. All right. You good? It's going to happen. And I'm going to beat up all the red decks, and we're going to eat them. Yeah. Guys, yeah. the question of the week. <sighs> 
We want to know what you are excited about, mm-hmm. most excited about. It doesn't necessarily have to be a card. It could be a couple of cards, decks, brews, things like that. Let us know what you're excited about with Rivals of Ixalan. Um, I think there are definitely a few cards that pique my interest. Obviously, we've realized Will is all of a sudden really excited about this set. Yeah. Um, well, eh, eh, just, about that one deck. Yeah, um, that's really it. <laughs> so there, is, there are a few things to be excited about. Is it Ascend? Do you think we're off base with that? You know, mm-hmm. Do you think Ascend is a good mechanic? There um, are a bunch of cards that get you little tokens. There are. Set yeah, yeah. for stuff. And again, the enchantment sort of theme helps you get there as well. But um, we'll, play test we'll see how that goes. But let us know your thoughts. We want to know. So let us know what you're excited about. And without further ado, oh, yeah. we come to our crack of backs. Um, I am still on the hunt. Me too. For Itlamok. Growing rights of Itlamok. Haven't gotten it. We've only got like two weeks left of this. Maybe not even that. Thank so. God. Um... As always, we will do our best to let you know. Wait, what? What's your? Um, we never said what yours is. Carnage Tyrant. Yeah. Rep. Ty- the Reptar. Reptar. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's not Reptar, but it's pretty good. That's an interesting card. Um. Oh, I just got. It. <laughs> What'd you? <laughs> really? <laughs> well. How did that happen? I mean, I got Jace cutting Castaway. Um, I got the the angry poet Watley. Most poets. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hotley. I mean, I think I picked Jace. I don't. <laughs> just... Yeah, I guess I pick Hotley. All like... right. Well, that was easy. Jeez, that was cool. Did we ever talk about Hotley? Not super, really. I don't think she's that good. I don't either. Sorry, I want to confirm that the other. That it's a different planeswalker, not just a planeswalker. No, it is a Watley. Yeah. Dang. I guess that makes sense because planeswalkers yeah. rare and whatnot. Yeah. I mean. Anyway. Yeah. Hmm. I would pick Jace. I mean, it's Jace. I'd pick Hotly. Yeah. Mm. I like that you say Hotly. How else would you say it? Watley. Yeah, definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> it's like a New York saying hot. Watley. Watley. She rides a dinos. <laughs> Whatly. She's a poet. Whatly. A scary poet. <laughs> mm. All right, guys. We hope you enjoyed this episode Where's of It Resolves. Dino? We're back and worse than ever. <laughs> uh, as always, though, we really do appreciate your support, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I think we're going to get out of here. Make sure to like and comment down below, oh, by the way. Oh my God. And make sure to subscribe. Turn on that little notification bell. That way you will get notified mm. for all of our videos, including podcast stuff card spotlights, yeah. cracker packs, vlog things that we may or may not have started doing, all sorts of random fun. things. That was fun to watch. Did you watch it? I did. Okay. I did. It was fun to watch. <laughs> so silly. Anyway, guys, <laughs> thank you again for watching. One, we one will more. see you in one more, one more. What? Would the owner of the oh, big God. scary dinosaur outside come move your car? It's eating everyone else's. Bye. <laughs>